how to score 9 first day in LRDA? How do you prepare for LRDA for every year's CAT? Like how many sets do you solve every day? Do you have strengths in LRDA? If so, how do you find and hone them? So let me explain it in detail. Now, when I prepare for CAT and when I am actually attempting going to the CAT center, my target is very simple. My target is to attempt all the questions in verbal. I have a very clear idea of uh, what are the sections in verbal I attempt first, whether I attempt RCs or whether I attempt uh, verbal questions. This I discuss every time I take these uh, verbal sectional attempts for Kraku. So every mock I attempt the verbal section and that live attempt is put up on a website. So I explain my verbal strategy in that. My strategy is very simple. I first attempt RCs, then I go for uh, verbal. I maybe attempt a couple of RCs, then I attempt some verbal, do the third RC, do some verbal and finally come to the RCs. That is basically my strategy for uh, verbal where initially I try to have my accuracy high in the initial uh, RCs but towards the end because I'm tired and I don't have a lot of time left, my accuracy will go down in verbal but that is fine. But at least in verbal I want to attempt all the questions. In quant also my target is that I should attempt all the questions. That also I can explain in detail what my uh, methodology is or what I try to do. I go through all the questions first. I try to solve as many as I can. If I get stuck in any question, I immediately cut my losses and go to the next question. And I try to take a call in 30 to 40 seconds. The reason I'm explaining my targets in verbal and quant this way is because in verbal and quant, when I before I enter the exam also, my target is to attempt all the questions. In LRDA, that is not the case. The reason for that is because I feel LRDA section is very, very fickle. It is not an easy section and it is very, very likely, very, very possible. I can picture myself coming out of the examination having uh, gotten zero sets correct. That is definitely possible. And with all humility, if it is possible for me, I think it is possible for anybody. Now, I know that and I recognize that. So what I tell myself is very simple. I tell myself that I have to get one set correct. That is the bare minimum. And I'm going to give myself around say 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get the first set correct. Because if I get the first set correct, I feel less stressed out. I feel uh, less panicky. And then I can get one more set correct. So if I get two sets correct, I'm very happy. So my target is to get two sets correct. And in the third and the fourth set, I'll try to maybe do some clever guessing for the theta questions. Maybe I look at the questions, try to solve, try to figure out what is correct, what is not correct. So maybe try to get say two sets correct and one or two theta questions correct. If I can do that in LRDA, I'll be very happy. That is basically my target. The reason I'm telling you all of this is because you can imagine in verbal, I want to attempt all the questions. In quant, I want to attempt all the questions. But in LRDA, even before I enter the examination, I want to get two sets correct, maybe two and a half sets correct. That is my target. The reason I'm saying this is because I meet many students who tell me that DLR is my scoring section. That I think is a very bad way of attempting the examination. Because DLR is nobody's strength. It is possible that you will do well. It is also possible that on an average, you do better than most students in DLR. Having said that, you can't put all your eggs in the DLR basket. I know many students who have their strategy that they're going to do very well in verbal. That I think is more consistent, that is more stable. Many people do very well in quant. That also I think is uh, more predictable where you can do well in quant on an average also and on that day also unless it becomes a very difficult test, you can do well in quant. You can score a lot in quant. That I also I think is a good strategy. But assuming that I'm going to solve three LRD assets or I'm going to do very well in DLR, I think is a bad strategy. Because if it goes wrong, it will go horribly wrong. So I tell all of this because I want people to look at DLR this way. Most students who are aiming for 95 percentile Plus, if they don't panic and if they take 20 minutes, they can solve it LRD asset. Out of the four LRD assets, if you go in thinking that I have to get two sets correct, if that is your mindset, for each set you have 20 minutes, maybe you can take the first two minutes to figure out which sets to attempt. And if you then start attempting the sets, you have 19 minutes for the two sets that you are going to target. I think there's a good chance you can get both the sets correct. And if you can get two sets correct, you are going to get 99 percentile plus. Like I mentioned earlier, my target for verbal is attempting all the questions. My target for quant is attempting all the questions. My target for DLR is to get two sets correct and some questions correct in the third and the fourth sets. Now, how do I approach the DLR set? The verbal sections, like I mentioned earlier also, my accuracy is high towards the start and towards the end, it peters out because I don't have a lot of time. But it also peters out for another reason. I try to give my brain some rest before the DLR section starts. Why is that important? Because many times it so happens that if you try to attempt some question towards the last 30 seconds, you are attempting an RC, you feel that you are very close to attempting an RC. And then you put in a lot of mental effort. There is a lot of adrenaline that is pumping. And finally, you mark some answers and then you click submit. There is no break in between sections in CAT. Once verbal ends, immediately DLR comes. Now, when immediately DLR comes and you have just somehow did uh, some last minute desperate attempts in verbal, your adrenaline is very high. You feel that, okay, I have done something in verbal and you are very panicky. Maybe you are very nervous or something has happened towards the last few seconds where somehow you submitted the section. And then immediately once DLR starts, at least it happens to me where my mind goes blank, where there is a lot of adrenaline that is rushing in and then suddenly there is a crash. I get these adrenaline crashes. And then you waste a few minutes just to get again accustomed to yourself, telling yourself that, okay, now verbal has ended, DLR is starting. Uh, you waste a few minutes to actually get into that zone. And DLR, like I mentioned earlier, is a section which I have a lot of respect for. 
in the sense that if things go wrong, they are going to go terribly wrong. So, what I try to avoid is that kind of a situation where I have a lot of adrenaline when verbal is ending. So, I kind of mentally check out of the verbal section 3-4 minutes before the section actually ends. So, I try to ease myself out. I never uh, try to do any last minute uh, ditch efforts in verbal. Because I feel that, okay, what is the best that is going to happen? Maybe I will get one more question correct in verbal, maybe two more questions correct in verbal. That is possible, but again, you can never be sure about the verbal accuracy. It is a possibility. But what is definitely going to happen is, if you do this last minute uh, salvaging efforts, and if you go very high on adrenaline, you are going to get an adrenaline crash when DLR comes. I try to avoid that. So, towards the last 3-4 minutes of verbal, I check myself out. I attempt uh, some RC, but again, it is not an RC where I am super invested in. I don't concentrate too much in the last RC that I attempt. I try to just look at some of the questions, try to see where they are in the passage and then I try to slowly adjust myself to the fact that verbal is now getting over. Now I have to focus on DLR because once the section ends and once DLR comes, I have to be in that zone where now it is DLR. This is the most crucial section because things can go very wrong. Now, once you are in that zone, you don't need to panic, but at least mentally you should be in that zone. Once that happens, the first two to three minutes, what I try to do is I go through all the sets, all the four sets. I'll first again give you the important types of LRDS. I'll discuss that next. But once I look at the four sets, I try to see what those sets are of, what type of sets they are. If you answer a lot of LRDS sets, you can get a sense of what type of LRDI it is. For example, the important types of LRDIs are arrangements, puzzles, Einstein's puzzles, some DI sets. DI sets include bar graphs, pie charts, spider webs, all of these things. You also have Venn diagrams. There are some scheduling types of sets. So you have different, different types of sets. Now, once I look at a set, I try to figure out what type of set this is. There are some sets which I'm comfortable with. Some sets which I'm comfortable with are like the arrangement sets or the Einstein's puzzles. Uh, those sets, what I feel is given the, a set of clues, basically if you have say 10 clues, if you go through each of the clues repeatedly again and again, and if there is a table that needs to be filled, and you keep filling them and go through the clues again and again, eventually you will fill the table most of the time. And say if you are taking yourself, if you are taking 20 minutes to solve that set, most likely you are going to get it correct. This is a belief I have, so I am comfortable with that. There are some type of LRDS I am not good at. What are the type of LRDS I myself am not good at? Those are the 2D, 3D kind of uh, sets, where you have to picture somebody, a grid kind of a thing, and somebody has to go from one uh, station to another station. There are multiple paths that somebody can follow. There are multiple permutations and combinations. So those are the kind of sets I'm personally not very comfortable with. When I use the first two to three minutes, I try to figure out what are the type of sets these are. And I also try to get a sense of whether these sets are easily solvable or not. The second thing I try to look at in these two minutes is sometimes if you solve the instructions, if you go through the instructions, you're going to get one pattern. And once you get that one pattern, you can answer all the questions immediately. Some sets are designed in such a way that all the questions are individual. You go through the questions and every question you have to solve individually. So again, I try to place which of the two types of sets are each of these four LRDI sets. Because I personally, like most of us, want a set where if we spend 12 minutes and solve the set, we should be immediately able to solve all the questions. It should not happen that I have to solve the sets or there are multiple arrangements that are possible where I have to solve each of the questions individually. Once I make uh, an assessment, based on uh, all the four sets, I try to tell myself what are the sets I'm going to attempt first. Then I'll pick a priority order for the second one, third one and fourth one. And then I try to go for the first one. If I'm able to solve it in the first 10 to 15 minutes, that is good. If I don't solve it in the first 10 minutes, even then I tell myself that it's okay. My target is solving two LRDI sets. I wasted 10 minutes. I have 30 minutes. So instead of using 20 minutes per set, now I'll use 15 minutes per set. That itself is also a good amount of time. By this time, my mind is completely working. I have, I have some idea of the kind of LRDS that I have to attempt. So even then I try to calm myself that it is still okay. I have 15 minutes per set. I need to get two sets correct. I have already looked at all the four sets. So I kind of know what set to attempt next. So 15 minutes also is possible. Then I go to the second set. Normally, uh, even if I mess up the first set, the second set I'm able to solve. So most likely that will at least calm me down. But in the unforeseen scenario that even the second set, I waste another 10 minutes. Then I tell myself that it's okay. I'm going to solve one set. That is also okay. I have 20 minutes. I have to solve one set. And I'll get some theta questions correct, so I'll be able to salvage it. And so, if you tell yourself that if you try to calm yourself, LRDI is possible.